Halloween, so I'm sharing my witch theme videos for my different channels. For my collection THX 1138 collectibles and games channel, I'm sharing a fun Witch Witch 3D board game by Milton Bradley. For Yard Haunt 2000, also known as Yard Haunt, my do it yourself Halloween props, displays, and fog chillers channel, I'm sharing how to build a fog chiller witch cauldron. It uses a fog machine and specially designed container with a tray that holds ice to flash freeze the fog. As shown in the Halloween display I put up at my grandma's yard since she had over 350 trick-or-treaters. For Amusement 420, my Cedar Point Haunted Halloweekends channel, I'm sharing my dancing parade witches and call the scare Cedar Point witch videos. Come all you brave souls. This is our original vintage 1970 Witch Witch 3D board game by Milton Bradley. It's the original large box edition with a board that does not fold. So the game features three witch cards that you draw. One of them, Ghoulish Gertie, makes you drop a ball bearing whammy ball down the chimney to trip snares that I call traps. Push the pawns back a few spaces. It's sort of like mouse trap with witches. Simple concept but lots of fun. My video is lots of fun to do for this board game. The cool thing is, as we'll see in a minute, they design different traps that can affect the danger spaces in more than one room at the same time. The whammy ball bearing also makes a cool sound. Let's take a look at the unique board. It's a very aesthetic board with a classic 70s feel to it. Very rich, saturated colors. I show the assembly instructions at the end, and I'll go over the rules as we look at the game. Right now, let's take a look at the unique board. There are four unique rooms, and each one has a special trap. Those are sprung by the whammy ball that's dropped down the chimney. I inserted video clips of how they work. I'll show you the rules in the how to play section. Each of the room names sort of rhyme or have alliteration. The second room is the witch and kitchen, featuring cauldron artwork that fits a family of four comfortably. It features a floorboard trap that continues as a rug in the spell cell featuring ghost artwork against the purple wall. I like the overall contrast between the colors of the walls and the floors. It features a plastic bucket trap that also springs the wall trap in the bat's ballroom. I like the variety of traps and the fact that a couple of them affect more than one room. Every space on the grand staircase is a danger space. The bat's ballroom goes up to the grand staircase where the charm circle is to win the game, breaking the witch's evil spell. I keep this board assembled on display. When you assemble it, you have to make sure the walls line up really well. Otherwise, the whammy ball does not fall through random openings. But the cardboard is very thick and sturdy. Here's a fun flavor text inside the box. You can tell that Milton Bradley had a lot of fun designing this game. It's a relatively simple game to learn, and I think it has good replay value. It helps that I like Halloween and the witch theme. So let's meet the witches and their special abilities. After a player moves on their turn, or when they're turned into a mouse, on the next turn, they draw one card from a shuffled deck. It features 10 colorful cards per witch for a 30 card deck. Player chooses one of four pawns in the classic yellow, green, blue, and red plastic colors. There are two boys, two girls, and corresponding mice, presumably Hansel and Gretel, which Hazel seasoned. Reminds me of the Bugs Bunny cartoon. All players start on the blue circle in the broom room. Each player rolls one six-sided die to move that number of spaces along the path. You move by exact count, and there are no special spaces that make you do anything except the danger spaces if the whammy ball falls in that room. If a player draws a Wand of the Wicked card, they must replace their playing piece with a mouse of their color. While a player is under a spell, they may not move. On a mouse's turn, they only draw a card. If they draw Glenda the Good, the spell is broken, and they replace their mouse with the playing piece. Their gameplay proceeds as normal. They may move in the following turn. If a player draws a ghoulish Gertie card, they take the whammy ball, which is a steel ball bearing, and drop it down the stack of the chimney. It's a little difficult because you're not allowed to touch the chimney with the hand that holds the ball. I had to do it in this demonstration because I'm wearing Halloween skeleton gloves. It's a very fun, exciting aspect of the game. The traps are called snares in the game. If a playing piece, even a mouse, is on the red danger space, 
and the whammy ball comes out and trips the snare, the player must go back to the nearest blue X space and start there in the following turns. The ball or snare do not need to touch or knock over the playing piece. It's funny that I compare the snares, especially the broom to mouse trap, and they have mice in this game. Any number of pawns and mice can be on the same blue space. The blue space and the path spaces are non-danger spaces. So if the whammy ball falls in that room, and even if you're knocked over, you do not have to go to a blue space. You must be on a danger space in order to be affected. You just simply place the pawn back on its safe space. And the blue spaces aren't placed too far back in the rooms. So it's not like you have to go all the way back to start. Two of the three witches are bad witches. However, they're not that cruel. In this case, no pawns were in the spell cell, and even though the whammy ball falls into the spell cell, the snare that's also tripped is in the bat's ballroom. So the green piece was hit on a danger space and has to go back to the blue space in the bat's ballroom. Here's an example of the red pawn winning the game. She rolled a 5 and lands on the blue pawn on the staircase, but the rules say to move forward one space and happens to be the charm circle. You do not have to land on the charm circle space by exact count to win the game. It is a fun fast paced game and I actually can't wait to play it on Halloween. So that's an overview of how you play Witch Witch. Now here's the assembly instructions printed on the back of the box followed by the game rules printed on the inside of the box top. The assembly isn't too difficult, it doesn't take too long to set up. But like I mentioned earlier, you have to make sure it's lined up at 90 degree angles in order for the whammy ball to fall down the chimney and exit the chutes at random. Otherwise, it could end up going out the same chute all the time. The thick cardboard has held up pretty well over the years. It's what we call a prefab house. It was delivered on a wide load flatbed trailer escorted by a retired highway patrolman on the highway. It was a witch's buyer's market in 1970. Their homeowner's insurance was pretty high for being two-thirds evil witches. However, the contractors in the Black Woods were never heard from again. This footage is all that remains. The witches made more money on the royalties than they did on this game. The broom snare trap is the one piece that really reminds me of mouse trap. So here's the printed rules on the inside of the box top. Makes it easy not to lose compared to a sheet of paper. You can pause this to read it, and I'll add some occasional comments as we look at it. My other vintage board game videos you can check out, including some contemporary ones, I've noticed that in the analytics, audience retention is pretty high during written rules and instructions. There's some pretty good writing in here, and it's interesting how they don't have to say he or she. Personally, if they want to do that, they should just say they or theirs. Names of the rooms are lots of fun. I think it's a really cool theme and perfect for a Halloween video. There have been many variations made since this, including different illustrations and released in different languages. And instead of a whammy ball, it's a skull. They also released a Ghostbusters theme. Personally, this original one is by far the best. I hope you enjoyed this. It was fun to do. Now enjoy the other sections in my fun Halloween witch theme video. This is my somewhat elaborate fogging cauldron using a fog chiller based on the Vortex product design. It was my idea to use a Coleman Igloo ice cube cooler. Now that's just for the 48 quart size and shape. It doesn't need to be insulated at all. The actual Vortex product that this do-it-yourself modified version is based on is thin plastic. I've made one since then out of a 5 gallon bucket for a more compact size. But you do get a better fuller effect using this size and this design. So even though it seems elaborate, it's a worthwhile effect. The idea of flash frozen fog is that it lowers the temperature enough to make it heavier and denser and linger. So here's what I had to say about it in the actual video. After this I show my 5 gallon bucket fog chiller cauldron experiment and low lying graveyard fog techniques. And the wind takes it but at least it billows and lingers more than if it wasn't chilled. If you just hooked a fog machine up to it, you wouldn't get the boiling cauldron effect, or fogging cauldron effect. This is the fog chiller, the 48 quart igloo ice cube cooler. It's 
filled with refrigerator ice cubes because they don't stick together as much as what you get from the store. And this. It sets on a hardware mesh and PVC uh, frame. The mesh is zip tied to the PVC um, a tray. There you can see the hardware mesh tray and the zip tie to pull it out. It has to be pulled out. And this ice tray is two thirds from the bottom. There's a piece of PVC, two inch diameter PVC. And I also used what just came off. It's a weather stripping so the fog doesn't seep through the cracks in the lid so the fog goes in from the fog machine which is protected by the waste basket three inch gap between the fogger nozzle which is centered to the two inch PVC used a hole saw two and three eighths inch hole saw to drill through the um, cooler. Ninety degree elbow and the fog goes up just like that. It hits this lid. It expands, it's forced down through the ice where it's chilled. The ice is about one to two inches thick. The top of this is about an inch from the closed lid, inch, inch and a half. So the ice level is about like that. And then it exits. There's no 90 degree angle, it's just a straight PVC, two inch PVC at the bottom. And then it goes into aluminum dryer duct. Or it could have the trash bag attached. In either case, it would come out chilled instead of hot from the fogger. That's the reason for the fog chiller. And that's the effect, that's how it works. You can see it billows. If it wasn't chilled, it wouldn't billow, it wouldn't linger. And it wouldn't roll over the sides, it just shoots straight up. And in combination with a mini mister inside with the tap water, and it gives a pretty decent effect. This is based on a Vortex Fusion design. Somebody on the internet sells them. They're made out of plastic pails. And they came up with the idea of shooting fog to that 90 degree angle to the top. Or from the top. And that seems to give the fog a chance to expand. And go through the separate chamber of ice. So then this is the fog chiller. Again, hooked up to aluminum dryer duct, about six feet, three inches. The other 400 watt mini Jemmy from Walmart, about 16 bucks, is inside of another plastic trash or waste basket from Lowe's and Kmart Creepy Cloth to disguise it. And the Kmart Creepy Cloth is also disguising the 48 quart igloo cooler, which is spray painted black with Krylon Fusion spray paint flat black or camo ultra flat is what we used on the fence and it, it adheres pretty well for the most part to plastic without sanding or primering so this is the mini Jemmy mini fog machine it's just a little smaller than the other 400 watt fogger that was from 2005 this is 2006 model and it also has the same remote control timer, which has a magnet on the back. And it operates the same way. I propped it up in order to line it up with this pipe, which is normally the intended inlet, or outlet rather. But I had better success using it as the inlet. But that meant I needed to prop up the fog machine to get it the nozzle centered so I use the mini mister box and 
the trash can is on top of that. The fog machine is inside the trash can. Creepy cloth on top of all that. Inside are the string lights. Orange string lights from Target. They have the best orange color. Inside that is a cauldron that's a little taller than it is round, filled with tap water and a mini mister from eBay. 20 bucks off eBay shipped and otherwise 30 bucks at the Halloween stores. And what that does is it just keeps the effect going. And I used a coat hanger and bent it because it doesn't float in water. And that supports the mini mister. Which has a sensor on it if the water level gets too low. But it worked all night for a couple hours. So when the fog machine's not on, that picks up the slack and continues the effect pretty good. And I had a Halloween's cup of tap water just in case. I needed to add it to the mini mister because if it's below the sensor level it shuts off. And I like the red LED light. The ones they sell in the stores have different colored lights. I don't care for that. This is a skeleton which it's also a 36 inch posable skeleton. That one was from orientaltrading.com. The pirate one I got at the 50% off sale after Halloween last year at Spirit Halloween stores. Um, a mini strobe in front of it just to light it up. Three skulls on top of a hay bale about three feet by 18 inches by 15 inches from Myers. String lights are duct taped to this plastic cauldron. 16 inch plastic cauldron. The skeleton has a little kid's witch costume from Target. Flame witch costume. And a dreadlock wig. And a broom from Kmart. And we have it plugged in. We used all the outlets we could. This plug has fog machine plug, the mini mister brick plug, and the string light plug. And that worked out just fine. Here's another version of a fog chiller cauldron. This was done as a test and it turned out okay. It uses the mini mister, but instead of a 48 quart igloo, it uses a 5 gallon bucket. For this test, instead of making something like a vortex chiller with an expansion chamber and ice tray, as you can see in my other fog chiller videos, I decided to dump a couple pounds of ice in the bucket to move it away from the inlet a little bit. It's just enough to flash freeze the fog. The ice will eventually melt in the bucket. The fog machine should be one inch away from the inlet anyhow to create air convection. This produces more fog as opposed to being flush against the inlet. So the water's not going to drip into it anyhow. The blue bag is because the 3 inch diameter aluminum dryer duct did not fit into the hole that was cut into the cauldron. This seems a bit elaborate, but it was a test that I wanted to try. Having made numerous fog chillers, you could put ice inside the cauldron as well. This is just the mini mister without the fog. You can see that works pretty good too. This is my mini mister idea that I've used in the past. I had half of a brick to prop it up.
and about a gallon of tap water inside a small plastic cauldron. I found that shape and size is the best to use. They're both from Halloween stores. You have to keep the water level above the mini mister, so you're going to have to continually fill it up every 10 minutes or so. The inside of the large cauldron will get water in it from the mini mister. It's a bit like a fountain. I have to get the large cauldron to stand straighter and more level on that custom skull base I made. It helps to have a timer remote like I have for the Chevet. Here's the other half of the brick inside the larger cauldron in order to prop up the smaller cauldron just a bit, otherwise it is a little too low. I have to tape the red LED lights around the inside of the cauldron. The wind outdoors swirls around inside the cauldrons and lifts the fog in the mist. Another test I'll do when I have time, if I don't use the mini mister in the cauldron, is to put a hole in the bottom of the cauldron, and I have an extra one to use, and put it on top of the bucket. That might prop it up a bit much, but I put creepy cloth around the bucket. I hope this gives you some good ideas. This is a fun video that shows how you can get fog at home like they do at Cedar Point Amusement Park's Haunted Hollow Weekends in their scare zones. I'll also show how you can get low-lying or lingering graveyard Halloween display fog using do-it-yourself fog chillers in the second half of this video. It's a do-it-yourself Halloween prop, yard haunt display, and fog chiller channel that I've had since 2008. It's a very informative, so after you're done with this video, go and check it out. This is what the inside of the trash can looks like. It's a 4 inch diameter by two 8 foot pieces taped together to make 16 feet of semi-rigid aluminum dryer duct. It's coiled inside and goes in a hole in the side of the trash can towards the bottom for the fog machine inlet and out through a hole in the other side for the chilled fog outlet directly across from the inlet hole. Ideally the fog machine should be 1000 watts or more. I use a 1180 watt Chevet DJ Hurricane 1200 with a remote control timer. Put duct tape around the ends of the dryer duct to reinforce it because it tears easily. You can also spray paint it with black paint. Use a 22 pound bag of ice broken up with the side of a hammer and put into smaller bags inside the trash can or just dump it in. Over the course of a couple hours it will melt. These are the Dancing Parade Witches in the Cedar Point Hollow Weekends Parade. I like the optic green shawls. They actually are dancers. They were dancers in the magic show. I might as well show a couple clips of that after this. They went to college to be performers. It was a good group of dancers and they had fun with it. So I enjoyed recording it. It was a fun song for them to dance to and they actually used it in their magic show this season. However, there was one lyric that could have benefited from a rhyming dictionary. I heard that after last season, one of them had a job in a big time magic show at a resort, proving you don't have to be ugly to be a witch. The irony was on this other side where I'm at is a candy store, which would have been a good Hansel and Gretel Witch Hazel visual pun. Most of these dancers were also in last year's and this year's summer shows. They're basically in college or just out of college, so it has to be a fun summer job. This is a Cedar Point call of the Scare Witch, who had a short performance sending the Screamsters out to their scare zones. The hour is almost here. The hour my armies of darkness arise from their slumber. Thanks for watching. Check out all of my channels and subscribe. Click send me updates for more interesting videos.